folks, thank you for your splendid help. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. How many would rather be here than the best hospital in town? There is no good hospital in town. That is the truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody get enough to eat this morning? Amen, sir. How many of you ate something this morning you shouldn't eat? <laughs> Them donuts are bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. The Lord is good. All the time. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, whatever we say this morning, may it be covered in your blood. And may the presence of the Lord be so real. May the Holy Spirit touch us down deep. I mean down deep. Quit playing games with God. Quit being what we feel like we can get by with. But being on the level and righteous with the Lord this day. Touch our souls, Lord. May we every day grow stronger in you. Lord Jesus, give us a desire to grow stronger in you. Place it in our hearts. It's not human nature to want to be told anything by anybody at any time. Give us a desire to take the things you have told us to be obedient to you and to walk in you. Holy Spirit, be in this place. In thy name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. I can almost hear the response. I'm going to get to this right away. But it's what the Lord very, it's not long, but it's what the Lord definitely put in my heart. Why can't I stop sinning? Ouch! This is a church. We're supposed to be Christian people. You shouldn't even ask that. Really? How many of you have not already sinned today? You don't know whether you lift your hand or say yes or no to that at all, do you? Sandy, don't give me that sweet I didn't do nothing look. <laughs> I'm teasing you. On, on the way over in the car with Bud today, was there any sinning? She's lying. <laughs> 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 ha, praise God. <laughs> now, 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 next, now, next week when I ask if there's any trouble in the car on the way home, and you say, no, none at all, you know what he's going to say? <laughs> She's lying. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. They're good sports. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I think everyone and anyone that, good morning, Larry. Good morning, Lisa. 
I think everyone that has accepted Jesus as their Savior somewhere along the way has lamented the fact that they just can't behave. You know what I'm saying? That they can't stop with something. That there's, whether, whether it be an action, whether it be attitude, whether it be, as my wife would tell me, rolling my eyes. <laughs> Am I the only guy that rolls his eyes? No. <laughs> Who said that? But somewhere along the way, you have been a little frustrated with yourself and your Christian walk. And how you just can't seem to get a hold on it. Well, let's talk about that for just a little bit. I have done that many times. That what in the world is wrong with me? Why can't I just be what I ought to be, how I ought to be all the time? Can't run with the foxes and hunt with the hounds. They don't work. Does that make sense to you, what I just said? Amen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Well, we might just cast it off as just weakness in ourselves. Maybe I. I can make this personal real easy, and the rest of you can drag along with me, ride, drag, and eat a little bit of dirt, and decide whether or not it fits you. Maybe I don't understand the strength of Jesus, the one that I have accepted as my Savior. When I don't understand His power to save, to forgive and cleanse from all unrighteousness, I struggle with myself. I'm not going to ask you if you've been there because I know you have. We are people. When I don't understand his power to save, forgive, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness, I struggle with myself. But 1 John 1 and 9 says, But if we confess our sins to him, this is from the New Living Translation. If it was from, pardon? What's that? Okay. If we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just. This is, like I said, from the New Living Translation. To forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. King James Version would say unrighteousness. By the way, have you gone to the Lord today and asked him to forgive your sin today? That's something we should do every day on a regular basis. Have you said, Jesus, I know I have already been in the place of displeasure to you. I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me. If you haven't, why have you not? What are you waiting for? 
the day will be gone and you won't have done it. Hmm. Shut up, preacher. Quit meddling in my affairs. I'm sorry. That's just how it works. Read it again. But if we confess our sin to him, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness or unrighteousness. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. This is how we build relationships with the Lord and begin to understand the strength he gives us and the power he gives us. And his faithfulness. Don't get caught up. In a destructive cycle of life. Sin, guilt and fear. These things lead to a lack of joy in our salvation. And it all starts with salvation. Does it not? Going to the Lord and saying, Lord, I am a sinner. I recognize you as the Son of God, and I ask you to forgive me of my sin, to come into me, wash me clean, change me, make me a new creature in you. That's where it starts. Praise you, Jesus. When we get caught up in these cycles of of sin, guilt, and fear, and all these things that come against us, it usually just leads to more sin. The devil will stir any pot, anywhere, any time that contains these ingredients. He's all about that. And he doesn't carry a little spoon. He goes around with a canoe paddle. Just churning it up. Trying to make us feel like we have no hope. We can't ever get it right. That what I'm doing is not that bad. He just wants to do anything and everything to keep us in a state of wonder. Am I where I need to be with the Lord? Is my life right with the Lord? Have I done something that I cannot be forgiven of? I've heard that a lot. Where am I? Am I wasting my time? Am I wasting God's time? Where am I? Can I ever overcome this? Can I ever be where I should be? Psalms 51 and 12. Who wrote that? Let's try David. Restore to me the joy of Of your salvation. He's speaking to the Lord. Salvation comes from the Lord. That's what Jesus paid the price for. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And make me willing. Make me willing to obey you. Oh. How many times have we said that word? We don't like obeying. At least we don't like somebody telling us to. Do we? How many of you like to be told? How many of you guys like to hear your wife tell you to do something? Don't answer. It'll be a lie. How many of you wives don't like to hear your husband tell you to do something? Don't, Don't go there. We don't like being told. And make me willing to obey you. You know something? I'll just say it straight up. 
If you don't agree with me about the fact that obedience is an absolute requirement to salvation and to heaven, I want you to show me in the Bible where it says that. Because it does say that you must obey the Lord. And he's saying, give me a spirit that is willing to obey you. See, human nature don't like to obey nothing. David was pleading with God in verse 12. Why? He had just gotten through with adultery with Bathsheba and then murder to try to help cover it up. Kind of how much worse does it get? And he's saying, God, restore me. Now, what I want you to think about in that is what I said in the beginning. Why can't I stop sinning? Because human nature drives you. But Jesus went to the cross for just that. In mercy and love and grace, he stands ready to put us right back where we need to be. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Make me willing to obey you. Pleading because he knew he needed God's help. Nobody had to tell him. He knew where he was at. We know where we are at. We know what comes against us. We know what we struggle with. We all have things that drive us crazy, and that's just the way it is because we're in a sinful world. It's pretty interesting, and it's actually to me uplifting to see that he asked God for a return of the joy of his salvation. His salvation in the Lord, the forgiveness God had given him, and what it meant to him to walk daily in that freedom and in that spirit and in that forgiveness meant so much that he wanted to see it come back. Do we want to see it come back? Do we want to walk in the presence of the Lord and the freedom of the Lord and the joy of the Lord? Well, yeah, I would think so. Praise God. Joy is key in our victory over sin. It is also important that we understand that God sustains us with a willing spirit. He has a spirit that he is willing to go with you, to bring you back, to love you through it. He is willing to carry you, to forgive you, to put you back in right standing with him. How many people on this earth do you know that time after time after time after time you could do them wrong and they just keep saying, ah, it's okay, it's good. Go ahead. Here's this cheek, now here's the other. Yeah. But God in his great mercy, is willing. God takes joy in saving us, and we take joy in being saved. Our salvation, as we know, isn't based on anything that we do. Isn't that a good thing? But good or bad... And whatever we do, our salvation is based on the love, the grace, and the mercy of God. 
What does it say in Ephesians chapter 2 about that? Who wants to quote that for me? It is by grace we are saved through faith. Not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. God saved us because he loved us. And God will bring you back and God will forgive you. He will forgive me. He will forgive anything. He will look at us and say, it's done, my son, my daughter, because I love you. Because I died for you. So when you feel like you can't get things right and you keep doing, God will forgive. Now, it's not a cakewalk deal. Understand that. The Bible tells us in Ephesians, excuse me, in Luke 13 and 24, strive to enter through the narrow gate. What does strive mean? Work at it. Work at it. Work at your salvation. Strive to enter through the narrow gate for many. I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. And Acts 24 and 16. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense towards God and men. Work at your salvation. Work at doing what God asks you to do. Read his word. Pray. Ask him to fill your heart with that and work at being what you should be. And you know what I mean, don't you? I know what I mean. Do you know what I mean, Matt? When I say to strive at your walk with the Lord, to do right, to be right. Sure. Work at following him. Work at your relationship with him. The Lord does expect us to make an effort to serve him. Remember, he died for each one of us. Paul speaks of this in Romans chapter 7, 7 through 10, in understanding something. You know, it was the law first, right? Man needed something. No? Wasn't the law? Was it the law? We got the law because that showed us what sin was. That showed us what sin in our lives was. Paul speaks of not coveting. Before anything was said about it, who even gave a whimper of a thought about covetousness? He didn't. Because that goes against the grain of the sinful nature. We don't want to hear about it. We don't want to think about it. So let's just not talk about it. Let's not hear about that. That way we don't. And before God gave us a law to tell us what we could not do, we would gladly do that. Then here comes the law that says you can't do that. And we're, I don't like that one. Because now I understand what I have been doing. I understand what the covetousness means. And God says you can't do that. What does a sinful nature say? <laughs> do what you want. But he says you can't. So we didn't like that. Sin which is of Satan, and the nature of sin is what works in us to turn us upside down. Hmm. Law aggravates, rubs raw the sin nature. The law pointed out our sins. It showed us what was wrong in us. 
the grace of God can do what the law could never do. Cleanse us from sin. The Holy Spirit now convicts us of sin. And the grace and the mercy and the love of God can still cleanse us. So the way to stop sinning is not to add more rules. That's man's way. You can see that. They got more rules. They got more paper stacked up than, you know, whatever. Carter's got little liver pills. There you go. That's man's way. Every time something ain't quite right, make another rule, make another law, make another something, and then figure out how that interacts and messes up with this and, and all that. Man, man has no way of making things right except through God. God knew this. In fact, He gave us the law so that we would be aware of our sins and turn to Him. You will find that in Romans 3, 19 through 20. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. Verse 20. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. As we read in Ephesians earlier, it's all a gift of God. Through his mercy and through his love and through his grace. When we try to live the Christian life on our own, on our own, when we're going to make the decisions of what we're going to do and not do, when we're going to decide what's right and what's wrong, when we're just going to go on man's intuition about everything we do, when we try to live the Christian life on our own, we labor under a terrible burden. That is the truth. We feel like we have to somehow do something to secure our salvation. But then our sinful nature keeps us from obeying that law that told us what's wrong. The more you focus on the law, the more the sinful nature rebels. Satan sees to that. Just like you do, Kurt, when Janet tells you to do something <laughs> over and over and you rebel more and more and where has it gotten you? <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> Praise God. It's the truth in our lives with the Lord. The more you focus on the law, the more the sinful nature rebels. Satan sees to that. The more that sinful nature rebels, the more fearful we become that we are not saved as children of God in our fight against the devil, in our, in our desire to live our Christian life. It's a vicious cycle that comes about. the more fearful we become that we are not saved. The more of this we entertain, the less joy we have. And the devil promises us happiness in his way, and that starts to look good. And that is death. That's how the devil works. He stirs the pot. And if we don't pay attention, we'll slip up. I always think about this when, the, when I think about 
how Satan tries to work things and, and get you in the swirl and take you down. I think about that deal with the frog holding on to the stork's neck. Have you ever seen that picture? The stork has swallowed the frog. The only thing sticking out of his mouth is his hands around that stork's throat. Yeah. Satan's trying hard to swallow you. But there is mercy and there is grace. Don't let him ever put you in a fear situation and a questioning situation. Yes, you need to work at your salvation. You need to strive. You need to serve him. You need to read. You need to pray. You need to be in his presence. Don't let Satan ever get you to the point where you say that doesn't work. Because that's the only thing that works is being close to the Lord. When we disagree with God and hang on to the idea that we must fulfill the law, we lose our joy in salvation. And we set ourselves up for failure. We labor under a terrible burden when we get in that situation. Never knowing from day to day what goes on and how it is and where you stand. You can't have any peace. You can't have any joy. You can't say, oh God, where am I? Am I right with you? Am I wrong with you? Whatever. You know what you do? You get out your Bible and say, the Lord is my strength. He is my strong right arm. And I will trust in him. And Satan, I rebuke you and you leave me alone. And I plead the blood of Jesus over me and my family and everybody I know that loves you. And I'm not going to let you put me in the blender of the world. I'm going to stand my ground in you. And I'm going to love you, and I'm going to serve you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We just get to where we feel like we've got to come up with something that secures our salvation. As long as I live for the Lord, and I do my best to live for Him and strive to live for Him... And I go to him every day and ask forgiveness of sin and that he show me where I need to be and what I need to do. I'm not worried about my salvation. He's taking care of it. Praise you, Jesus. The only way to break the cycle is to accept the fact Accept the fact. And you're going to say, well, this is diametrically opposed to what we've always been taught. But accept the fact that you cannot, upon your own, stop sinning. It will be through the strength and the power of God that you don't sin. This may be, like I said, contradictory. But if a person does not stop trying to save himself, he will never rest in the knowledge that God has saved him. The joy of salvation comes from accepting the fact that God's grace covers us. Praise you, Jesus. That he will change us and conform us to the image of Christ. And that is his work to do. Not ours. When we get a hold of that, sin loses its power. We no longer feel the impulse to turn to sin as a means of temporary relief from anxiety. Isn't that funny how you can do that? You're trying to live the life for the Lord and everything's 
getting all goofy and crazy, and all of a sudden, what do you want to do? Something that's wrong to give you some relief. Who is in that? Satan. Praise you, Jesus, for your power. Thank you, son. And when we get like that, then the good works we accomplish in faith are done because of love and joy rather than a fear of duty. Don't let it become a weight around your neck. Walk in freedom in the Lord. Do what you know you should do. Let Him take care of everything. I, I've had a hard time with that in myself that I'm not the one that ought to be trying to do what I need to do to take care of things around me. I can't do it. I figured it out finally. Have you figured it out? Sometimes no amount of knowledge, no amount of ability, no amount of money can fix what God needs to take care of. And He will do it. He will do it. Praise God. Get it down deep. The fear factor is of Satan and no one else. He and he alone is the one that brings the anxiety, anxiety to you. He knows what it does to you. You better believe it. And he also knows what the peace and the joy and the love of God does to you and for you. And he doesn't like it. Satan knows he's on a short leash. And he knows his time is coming to an end. And he's doing everything he can to make us question our salvation. To make us say, why why can't I do what I should do? What is it that you're worried about that you're not doing or doing? Take care of that. That is within your power. It is within your power to read God's Word, to pray. It is within your power to draw close to God because He's just got His hand out there wanting you to come in all the time. You have that power. That will take care of a big part of all the issues of life. The things that will drag you down. My little sign, Rocky and I talk about that a lot. You take care of the possible, let God take care of the impossible. Walk in the Lord to the best of your ability. Let Him cover you. Realize that every day you go to Him and ask for forgiveness. Every day you go to Him. I've said it over and over, and I'm going to keep saying it, because I learned a long time ago, at least I heard a long time ago, many years ago, that a radio ad has to be heard eight times before it sticks. So, however many times it takes me to get it to stick, I'm going to say it. Get in God's Word. Pray. Know that Word. Have a direct line to heaven. And all the things that would come against you, it's just simple. Lord, here it is. This is what's bothering me. This is what gets me down. This is yours to take care of. Turn your hands off of it. Take, turn loose of it. You can't fix it. You haven't been able to fix it so far. You're not going to fix it in the future. Cast your care on me, for I care for you, he says. When you cast something, you've got to turn loose of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 through 58. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, 
immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. You do what you know you ought to do. When Satan brings things against you, rebuke that sorry hide. Tell him, get behind me. I plead the blood of Jesus over this situation. Whatever has caused you trouble and you know you're wrong in, ask God to forgive you. Don't wait till a week from now when you don't even remember if you did or not. Just go right to the Lord. Lord, forgive me. Help me. Strengthen me. Give me what I need right now. You are my rock. You are my salvation. In you I trust you have been faithful. You will continue to be faithful. Return my joy, as David says. The joy in my salvation. Things happen. That doesn't mean it's okay to let things happen. But things happen. Go to the Lord. Ask His forgiveness. Get it right so from that moment forward you can walk with the Lord clean, upright, your head held high, and say, Jesus, what have you got for me to do? Give me strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Don't let Satan get the best of you. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Can we have some music, please, for the keys, everybody? Thank you, Jesus. Is there something troubling you today? Is there something you've been dealing with? Is there something that you feel like, I got to get by this? That Satan is trying to throw a big old stumbling block in your face. To keep you from having joy in your salvation, you need victory. Let's stand together, please. Right now, I'd like to see you take that to the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You know yourself, except for the Lord, you know yourself better than anybody and anything. You know where you're at. You know what hinders you. You know what you feel like maybe the, the Lord has not forgiven you of. Something that just saddles you down and weight you down and you just can't get by it and it's just driving you crazy and it keeps you from being effective in your Christian walk because it just helps you go on and keep doing what ain't right. You know what I mean? If that is where you're at today and you need deliverance from something, you need a touch from the Lord, you need to know where you stand with the Lord and you need to get some things right. Maybe you need to get some things right with somebody. First of all, get it right with the Lord. Ask God to cleanse you, to make things in your life the way they should be, to forgive you to give you that right spirit and the joy 
that David so desired to return to him because he had really botched it up. But he knew where his joy would come from. He knew where his forgiveness would come from. He knew where his right standing with the Lord would come from in forgiveness from the Lord. If you have that today, deal with it. Don't just think about it and stand here and say, well, I don't know, and walk out the door carrying it. It's just going to get heavier. Ask the Lord to clean it out. Get it right. Accept the forgiveness that he gave you on Calvary. Praise you, Jesus. Let's sing something, guys. Praise you, Jesus. Those are words that we should hear. Love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. And that's what it is. Surrendering our life to Jesus. Hallelujah. I I surrender all again. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Pray. You, Jesus. If you're here today and you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, and you know that if your number was up, you would not be able to look forward to the joys of heaven and the Savior that gave his life for us. If you're here today and you need Jesus, and you know that he's speaking to you. Let's get her done. You meet me right here. We will all pray together and we will ask the Lord to forgive and to come into your heart, to your life, and make you a new creature in him. And he's all about that. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. He right now is a Savior, the forgiver of sin. Let's meet Him on that basis rather than as our judge. Praise you, Jesus. If you need Jesus, let's talk to Him. Meet me right here. We'll wait just a moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. To him I freely yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Remember next Sunday, service at the same time. No breakfast in there because we'll be having Christmas dinner afterwards. God bless your precious hearts. 
Jesus, keep you this day, take you safely to wherever you're going. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy to us. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, amen and amen. Praise God. Go from this place, but not from the presence of the Lord. That is so important to always be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your hearts. Thank you for being in God's house today. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. Praise you, Jesus.